The, the problem with a quarter inch lap joint is that you have that corner that will only take so much heat before it just melts away, scallops, chews up. You have to add enough filler to get it up to that edge. At the same time, you're watching that root of the joint, trying to punch it in and get full penetration into the root of the joint. They call it hitting the root. In an earlier video, I used this number six gas lens setup with a water-cooled torch. I was up around 200 amps for this outside corner joint with the number six gas lens. I'll be doing a lap joint today, but I expect to be around the same amperage. I'm gonna switch over to this clear cup for filming purposes. You can see here it's kind of lighting things up where we can see a lot of detail. I'm gonna give myself about an extra 50 amps to play with today. I'll just run the foot pedal. And I'm gonna set the AC frequency to 150 hertz. 120 is a really good all around setting, but to try to punch in a root of a joint, I kind of think that a little higher frequency might help. My cleaning is on 30%, and that means I've got 70% electrode negative. After just a couple attacks, one on each end, we're ready to get started. I'm gonna weld this short run on this end really quick, and that's gonna kind of preheat the piece just a little bit, and also let me know if my settings are pretty close. Here you can see the issue that I was talking about with a lap joint. I'm just trying to take that edge of that puddle right up to the corner, but push enough filler metal in there where there's not a real big noticeable scallop. Getting penetration into the root of that joint while not chewing off that edge is the challenge for me anyway, on quarter inch thick. Before the piece is warmed up, it takes a little bit more amperage, and then as it warms up, you start using a little bit less. So I'm around 200 amps now. And I'm not going along very fast at all because I'm watching the leading edge of that puddle and I'm trying to make sure that it goes in as good as it can into the root. It looks a little cold to me, especially the bottom, bottom leg. If this was a T-joint and not a lap joint, I would just give it more gas and try to punch it in there more. But the more amperage I use, the more I'm likely to eat that corner off. So I'm kind of just trying to go along slow and give it time to run down there into the root. It doesn't look like it's running in there perfectly, but it's, it's close. But we're going to test this. We're going to do a cut and etch, also called a macro test, on this joint. And we'll change the setup and run one or two more tests, and we're bound to learn something. So before we change anything, we're going to do a little cross-section test of this joint. Cutting it with a porta band, giving it just a little bit of a polish. And I'm etching this with Easy Off Oven Cleaner and a Q-tip. Now, there's the, a view of the, what the arc shot, the puddle, looked like. And there is the cross-section of the joint. Could be better, but it's not horrible. In other words, there's no dark line showing obvious lack of fusion. It just looks kind of like a braze joint. So I'm wondering if torch angle will make much of a difference. So I'm going to run one more, and we'll test that. We'll speed things up a little bit on this one. I'm going to aim more toward the bottom plate instead of pointing it in there evenly. I'm going to favor that bottom plate. Sometimes that's very helpful on a lap joint, especially on thinner metals. I'm still doing the same thing. I'm watching not to feed too much rod, but I am trying to feed enough not to chew off that top corner. Definitely favoring the bottom plate. And my travel speed is a good bit slower than it would normally be if I weren't really focused on getting penetration into the root. So a quick polish on that one and also some easy off etchant. That shows a slightly better penetration profile but a hint of lack of fusion right there in the root. I wondered if increasing the AC frequency all the way to 300 would help so I ran a little short section doing that. I still ran into that problem of chewing that corner off because I was trying not to add too much filler metal and watch that leading edge of the puddle and try to really lead it into the root of the joint but Still, I don't think it was working very well. And I didn't really like listening to the 300 hertz, so I went to 150 hertz with a number six gas lens. Number six is a good cup for aluminum. I didn't change the gas a bit because I had it set right around, probably right around 19 or 20. But I'm exaggerating this motion here. I'm really trying to coax that that filler metal into the root of the joint before I dab and add filler metal each time. I'm giving it a half a second or so to kind of wet in, neck into that corner. 
and I'm still right at around 200, 205 amps. This is a two-pass weld, so I'm intentionally not coming up all the way to the corner when I add filler metal. I'm just adding just what I feel like is just enough to then come back with a second pass and go all the way up to the corner. So I'm getting my penetration on this pass. I'll get the fillet weld size on the next pass. All right, we need to let it cool a bit or it'll be way too hot to mess with. After about five minutes, second pass. This takes a little bit less heat than that first pass. You're not really trying to drive it in there. This is just a little bit of added reinforcement. You don't want to use too much heat and, and melt that corner off. So this is only around 150 amps or so here. There might be some scenarios where you could just get by with the one pass and, and still not take it all the way to the corner. But if a drawing stipulates or specifies a certain size fillet weld, that's what you have to do. Let's test that one. It seemed like it went in there better than the single pass, but that's why we test things. Again, with the easy off, sometimes it actually works more aggressively and quicker if it's hot, if the metal's hot. Penetration looks really good, but we got a pour. On aluminum, it's not that uncommon to see that. I'll tell you why I think we see that pour in just a second. I kind of thought we'd see some decent penetration on that cut netch. I was really exaggerating that arc up in the front of the puddle and then backing up before I dabbed rod. I was careful not to add too much rod and cool the puddle off and run it all the way up to the edge. But I was not surprised at all to see that pour. And the reason is I didn't touch this with acetone. I didn't wire brush it. I didn't do anything. I'm just trying to test and techniques for penetration. I should have taken a minute and cleaned that, but we learned something, right? Hey, listen, my online store is at weldbonger.com. That's how I pay for these videos. If you're interested in any of the stuff that I use in this video, like the Prime Weld 325, we've got some special packages that you just can't get anywhere else. We've got TIG fingers, TIG cups, TIG accessories, gloves, tungsten, filler metal. Give it a visit, weldmonger.com. I hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you next time.